Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today we're going to take a look at the Toads DI board, but we're also going to look at the Toads DI6 hat that goes on top of it, or daughter board, or whatever you like to call those things where you put two circuit boards together. Before we get over to the bench and do the work, what actually does this thing do for you? Well, it does a lot of things for you. This takes all of your old radios, and in this case, with the six pin connector on it, all of those old radios that have the six pin connector, but don't have a USB sound interface built in and gets you a USB sound interface. You can see the USB port right under there. So it'll connect up to your computer via USB-C. It'll connect up to your radio via six pin. If you don't have the six pin, you can do it manually like I've been showing you in the past couple of videos. But once you get it all connected, you can do WinLink, you can do APRS, you can do FT8, you can do anything that requires getting data from your computer to your radio so your radio can send it out over the airwaves via RF. And then anything that comes from RF that needs to get into your computer, you can do that too. We'll have some more videos in the future on how to use this board with old radios to make that happen. But for now, we got to get the DI6 board attached to the Toad's digital interface board on the bottom. Let's get over to the bench, make that happen. For a while now, I have been showing you how to build out all of these audio circuits to connect to your Toad's digital interface board in order to connect to a radio that doesn't have a data interface port. But what if we had a radio that has a data interface port? This is the Yaesu FT8800, and it's got that six pin data port on the back. They also have a bunch of these Yaesu radios that have 10 pins, but we're gonna talk about the six pin today. And this whole project started from this USB sound fob with all of this candy sprinkled on top of it. And I tried really hard and I was successful in getting these wires on, but it was really hard. What if this was easy? That's like my life's motto. What if this was easy? So we created this Toad's digital interface board here that has pin headers on it. And these pin headers do all of the things and then some, and then some more things. So there's a place to connect the transistor. There's a place for audio in left and right channel, audio out left and right channel. There's a place for the carrier on squelch line. There's a place for the PTT line. All of that is here on this pin header. And mine are a little messy because I've been doing some prototyping, but I need to clean that up so we can move forward. For these six pin radios though, this is a standard. These pins actually mean something and are always in the same shape on all the radios that have this kind of connector from Yezu and ICOM and Kenwood and others. There are some other flavors of this as well, but right now we're focused on the, the six pin boards. And this candy and this stuff here on this breadboard is all done for you on this board right here. So we have the audio trim pots to control your volume level and provide some isolation. That's these little guys right here, those little white headers that look like Phillips head screws. Those are actually the audio trim pots. And then we've got a bunch of other switches and a bunch of surface mount components. And this thing comes almost completely assembled and ready to go because we aren't 100% sure how you are going to use it. You can take your six pin radio connector and run it through here and do whatever you want with those pin headers. That is totally up to you. Or you can do what we're gonna do and put these things together in a nice little sandwich and make ourselves a digital interface combo pack. So I'm gonna get started on that right now. And this will require some soldering, but you got this. And if you don't, you gotta get started somewhere and why not do it somewhere easy with a friend helping you out. And so here I am helping you out. And I need to clean up my solder mess. So I'll even show you how to do a little bit of desoldering while I'm at it. This right here is the pine sill. It is a USB-C powered or 5525 barrel jack powered soldering iron. And I love this thing. It's tiny, it's new, it's awesome. There's even some hacking you can do, but I haven't had a need to hack it. You see how fast that thing warmed up the temperature? The quality of your solder job with this soldering iron is going to come from the quality of your USB power supply. And if you don't have a good USB power supply, then feed it with a good bench power supply on the barrel jack instead. I gotta get these pin headers uh, through holes here clean so we can get this job done. So let's get to it. This is solder wick, which has got a bunch of flux in it and this whole board is moving around. I really should get one of those Omni Fixos, but that cleans up real nice and real easy. Somebody figured out solder technology a long time ago and all of the problems have been solved. Because this has some flux built into it, it helps transfer the heat around and the solder is attracted to the copper and it just gets sucked right up in there. 
And sometimes your solder is so old and crusty because you've been working with something for so long that you need to add some new solder. So if it ain't moving, don't be afraid to put some fresh solder in there. That also gives you more surface area to pick stuff up with your solder with your solder braid. There we go. There was some braided wire left in there. All right, all those holes are now clear. It's a little dirty, but it's going to get dirty when I put these things on anyway. So the way that I would recommend doing this, if you get these two boards and want to put them together with the pin headers, first off, the male pin headers go on the bottom board. So what I like to do is put the pin headers on directly and then put the pin sockets on. And now they've got kind of a space to, to hold each other. They're going to be in the same orientation. Everything's going to be really good. Let's try and see how well it works. Because this is all about experimentation if I put the standoffs in between. Which means i got to go find my standoffs. And of course they are all in the RT95 project box. Where else would they be? Alright, so I've got my, my four nuts. I've got my four screws. I've got my four standoffs. I've got my fancy screwdriver kit. These are going to be number two Phillips. So on the first set of boards, these spots here for the standoffs are not actually the right size. They're just like a little bit of a millimeter too small. But what you can do is you can just thread right in as if they weren't a little too small. And there are also 3D printed cases available where you don't even need to thread these in at all. And the standoffs are optional. But I like them. Makes it look a little more professional. There is plenty of meat there because those are not actual electrical connections. Those are just grounding connections. And the entire circuit board's a ground. And then you cut away to make traces. And you can see this is pretty, pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Once you get going, you're good to go. And the reason why I'm going through all this trouble with these standoffs is because that's going to hold all of my parts in place so I can do my soldering. And I don't need an extra set of hands or anything along those lines. Switch out my socket driver for my screwdriver. And then I can switch it back to get these guys snugged up. This is just a little fiberglass board, so you don't need to kill things. You just need to get them tight enough. Tight enough is tight enough. It also helps if you have the right size nut driver. And so now that that is all screwed together, we have a nice little stand, nice little project going on, but I've got to get those guys soldered up. So back to the soldering iron. And this pine sill sometimes falls asleep and it goes into standby mode. Just press the plus key to wake it up. And we're right back up to temperature. All right, that's the top side done. And then just double check your work and touch up anything that doesn't look the way you want it to look. And now we have this unbeatable, perfectly parallel setup. Looks good. And so now instead of having a breadboard with all kinds of prototype stuff on it, we have a nice little package that is ready to go. Let's get her plugged in and see what lights up. Look at that, the super bright green LED. And there are a couple of other LEDs on there for transmit and power and carrier operated squelch. Well, that wasn't so hard, was it? It would have taken a lot less time if I didn't already do some prototyping on my Toad's digital interface board in the first place and have all those clogged up solder holes. Now that we don't have any dirty holes anymore, we've got the DI6 on top and we are ready to go for future videos where we connect this to older radios and make magic happen from your computer to the RF waves. Be sure you're subscribed to see all of those videos when they come out. It'll be Winlink and Packet Radio and APRS and all kinds of other stuff. And I've got an FT8800, I've got an FT857, I've got an FT818 from Yezu that we'll do some videos on. This would also work on older models of different radios. 
not just Yezus. I mean, I even have a Yezu FT100D that this would work on. But it'll also work on the ICOM 7100 and a bunch of Kenwood radios and a bunch of other radios that are out there. And if you don't have the six pin connector on the back of your radio, then you can wire up like we've been doing in the previous videos, your own connector and have a blast that way. There will be links in the description down below for all of the stuff that you saw in the video today, including the Toad's interfaces. And if you are in the US, you can get them off of my store. If you are in VK and ZL land, you can get them off of my mate Hayden's store. And if you are in UK or EU land, you can get them from Jonathan M0 JSX's store. Again, there'll be links for that stuff in the description below. And if none of this stuff is exciting to you, how did you make it this far in the video? If you want to follow along with the saga, be sure you're subscribed for when more videos come out and ring that bell to see some notifications. You get notifications, YouTube tells me it's sending out notifications and then it doesn't say that people have actually like taken action when the notification comes out. Totally okay if you have other things to do, but I was just curious as to whether or not notifications were working for you. If you're even actually seeing them. YouTube swears they send them to you. Just like YouTube thinks that this video right over here is one you might be interested in next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.